The next item of business is a statement by Rosanna Cunningham on the Greenhouse Gas Inventory 2015. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Rosanna Cunningham up to 10 minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to inform Parliament today of the sustained progress that the Scottish Government is making in tackling climate change. I will outline progress made against statutory emissions reduction targets based on the latest greenhouse gas emissions statistics published this morning. I will also provide an update on the climate change plan and set out the government's proposals for a new climate change bill. I'd first like to make clear the Scottish Government's continued commitment to this global challenge. The news of the US withdrawal from the International Paris Agreement is clearly regrettable uh, but it reinforces the need for more international cooperation on climate issues, not less. We continue to build our networks and cooperation globally. That includes our pledge to work with the state of California as part of the Under Two Coalition, which covers over a billion people and a third of the global economy. That work will continue. It is also important to remember the role played by the European Union in global climate uh, negotiations. As previously stated, we will work to ensure Scotland continues to benefit from the EU's powerful voice. I want to be clear that the Scottish Government remains focused on being a world leader on climate change, strongly supports the Paris Agreement, and will continue to collaborate with international partners. Presiding Officer, 12 months ago I informed Parliament that Scotland had met its statutory 2014 emissions reduction target. I'm delighted to report that statistics published today show that Scotland has met its statutory emissions reduction target for the second successive year. The level of the statutory net Scottish emissions account shows emissions in 2015 were 45.504 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. This exceeds the target level set in legislation. This is a significant achievement, particularly as it was realised against a background of ongoing improvements to the underlying data. These data revisions are outside of our control and reflect changes in the way emissions are measured rather than changes in the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. They are necessary as they represent improved understanding of the challenge faced and ensure consistency with international reporting under the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. The cumulative effect of these revisions over the years mean that the baseline is now around 10% higher than when the targets were set. The level of effort required to meet the fixed annual targets is therefore far greater than was envisaged when Parliament agreed the targets. The fact that today's statistics show a 41% reduction since 1990, well in excess of the 35% reduction envisaged when the targets were set, is a remarkable achievement in that context. Largely as a consequence of technical revisions to the data, Progress towards the 2020 target is not as advanced as reported in the 2014 release. However, what is important is that Scotland remains well on track to achieving its interim 2020 target. As a result of the most recent technical revisions, the forestry sink has reduced, but this sector continues to absorb significant amounts of carbon. We are committed to reversing the historic decline in woodland creation rates and protecting this important carbon sink, which has an important role in delivering our climate change commitments. Scotland was responsible for 83% of all the woodland created in the UK in 2015-16, and the draft climate change plan sets out our ambition to increase woodland further. Another natural carbon sink, peatland, is also vital, and we set out a step change in our ambition for peatland restoration through peatland action. Returning to the statistics, despite the revisions to the data, I am pleased to report that actual Scottish emissions in 2015 are down by 38% since 1990 and by 3% since 2014. This is a clear downward trajectory which shows that emissions reduction efforts are paying off. The new figures also show that Scotland has yet again outperformed every other part of the UK over the period since 1990 the standard baseline year. Scotland is among the top performers of the European EU 15 countries behind only Sweden and Finland. Presiding officer, as indicated and as previously committed, 
uh, to Parliament, I now wish to update Parliament on progress of the draft climate change plan. The period for parliamentary consideration of the draft has ended. I would like to thank everyone who contributed to the process, including the four committees who undertook detailed constructive scrutiny. We have listened to industry, industry experts, the public and private sector, parliamentary colleagues, and also the general public. This feedback, alongside the updated statistics released today, will help in finalising the plan. The Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee recommended that we engage further with stakeholders in finalising the plan. We are taking this forward by establishing an advisory group which will contribute to cross-cutting issues across the plan and advise on external engagement and communications. A number of key stakeholders have been invited to work with us on this group. We want to take time to work with our stakeholders to ensure that the final plan maintains ambition in meeting challenging goals, sets us apart as an innovator and global leader on climate issues, and is supported and owned by the people of Scotland. For these reasons, we anticipate publishing the final plan in early 2018. In the meantime, we continue to strengthen the package of measures to address emissions. Today, the Minister for Transport and the Islands launched Switched On Scotland Phase 2, an action plan for growth. This sets out the next steps in delivering the Scottish Government's vision to free Scotland's towns, cities and communities from the damaging emissions of fossil fuelled vehicles by 2050. The Minister also announced a further £8.2 million to support the Low Carbon Transport Loan Fund. These loans are interest free and for the first time will be available for electric motorbikes and scooters and plug-in heavy goods vehicles. We are also strengthening our support to communities to run locally led projects that reduce carbon emissions. I'm pleased to announce today that the Climate Challenge Fund is now open for applications offering multi-year funding to empower communities to tackle climate change. Communities will be able to apply for either one or two year funding and to give communities as much time as possible to develop applications, we're making this announcement ahead of the forthcoming budget. In February 2017, Scottish Natural Heritage published a report on blue carbon that estimated that the amount of carbon stored within Scotland's inshore marine protected area network is equivalent to four years of Scotland's total greenhouse gas emissions. We will be supporting Marine Scotland to consider further opportunities to expand this valuable and remarkable research to better understand the role and significance of blue carbon. And we're working towards a more targeted approach in ensuring the transition into low carbon employment is supported by our transition training fund. This will ensure that more oil and gas workers can be supported to move into low carbon sectors such as renewables and energy efficiency. Presiding officer, in addition to all of this, and in line with our programme for government commitments, the Scottish Government has been working with the Committee on Climate Change to bring forward proposals for a more ambitious climate change bill. I'm pleased to announce that the Scottish Government proposed to increase the level of Scotland's 2050 emissions reduction target to at least a 90% reduction from baseline levels. This proposal is the more ambitious of two options set out by the Committee on Climate Change who advise that a 90% emissions reduction target is a stretching contribution to the aims of the Paris Agreement. The proposals will strengthen Scotland's position at the very forefront of global climate ambition and in so doing play a key role in supporting Scotland's sustainable economic growth. We also propose to include provisions to allow a net zero emission target to be set as soon as the evidence becomes available to reset the level of the interim 2020 target to at least a 56% reduction from baseline levels, to set new interim targets for 2030 and 2040, and to set all targets on the, base of, on the basis of actual Scottish emissions. In response to requests, we also propose to increase the scrutiny period for future draft climate change plans. We have been consulting with key stakeholders on the committee's advice and will launch a public consultation on our proposals in the coming weeks. To conclude, presiding officer, the statistics published today show that Scotland is making strong progress against ambitious statutory targets. 
This will be bolstered by the plans I've set out for finalising the climate change plan to deliver a clear roadmap for meeting the targets and the new legislation. There is a huge opportunity to reap economic benefits from being at the forefront of a more resource efficient and sustainable global economy. We're starting to see this in action and the Scottish Government is determined that Scotland should seize the opportunity fully as well as fulfilling our moral obligations to future generations. Our actions provide the momentum and motivation to do exactly that. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement and I will allow around 20 minutes for that. Uh, it would be helpful if members could press the request to speak buttons now if they wish to ask a question and I call on Maurice Golden. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement. I am pleased to see that the Scottish Government have met their climate change target for 2015. Whilst overall the progress is encouraging, it would be incorrect to paint a picture that there has been improvement across the board. Since 2014, emissions have increased from transport and residential sources. Transport is now the single biggest source of carbon emissions in Scotland, with overall transport emissions increasing by 0.4% since 2014, and since 1990, we have seen no improvement in the sector. The Scottish Conservatives have a wide range of measures that will see a substantial reduction in transport and household emissions, from increased and incentivised electric vehicle ownership to improving the energy efficiency of the current housing stock to EPC rating C by 2030. It is clear that when there has been milder winters, this helped meet targets. Will the Cabinet Secretary continue to accept responsibility for these targets, even when there are harsher winters? Rosanna Cunningham. Well, we did actually have a slightly harsher winter between 2014 and 15, which is why we think the uh, residential emissions went up uh, over that period. Um, yes, it is in the, uh, you know, we live in the real world and uh, if winters are good, people will not uh, uh, use as much energy. If winters are bad, they will use more. And I think we have to accept the reality of that. Um, the draft climate change plan does set out uh, our intention to reduce transport emissions in 2030 uh, by, by, by 2030 by a third compared to uh, 2014. It is a long-term project um, and it's underpinned by technological innovation and our behaviour change approaches. We, I, I, I indicated what the Minister uh, for Transport has said today, uh, the announcements he's made today. Um, we invest over a billion pounds per year in public and sustainable transport to encourage people onto public transport and active tra travel modes. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate uh, that uh, uh, we are now in a situation where transport uh, emissions are now higher than energy emissions were before. Um, but, but that, in a sense, is reflecting the improvements that we've made in terms of energy. Um, and yes, indeed, we will have to look very carefully uh, at transport. In terms of uh, domestic uh, uh, um, residential emissions, good progress is being made. Um, the share of the most energy efficient dwellings, that's the EPC band C that um, Maurice Golden uh, referred to, uh, increased by 74% since 2010. So um, we are uh, um, doing uh, quite well there. I appreciate that there is a, a desire to uh, move to a target in terms of uh, EPC band C. Um, we have sought views on target setting in the consultation on SEEP as I understand it, and that closed on Tuesday 30th of May. Um, so we will now fully analyse and consider the responses before publishing the SEEP route map in 2018, but I would anticipate that the issue of uh, um, targeting uh, um, banding, uh, band C properties may arise uh, in the context of that. Claudia Beamish. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement. It is indeed to be welcomed that the Scottish Government has met its targets for the second year in succession. I also welcome the focus on blue carbon. However, it is very concerning that transport is now the heaviest emitter with growing emissions. Every year the Scottish Government reports the, uh, the emissions inventory. We have seen transport emissions barely change, uh, and likewise for agriculture. 
and we have called for uh, more action through the climate uh, change, change plan. But it doesn't appear that there are new actions in spite of the um, switched on Scotland phase two. How is the Scottish Government addressing modal shift? And in terms of climate justice, how can the Cabinet Secretary justify air departure tax? And why is the Scottish Government restricting eligibility to bus passes? Finally, does the Scottish um, Government, does the Cabinet Secretary agree that if a transition training fund is to be effective, that significantly more funding is required? Rosanna Cunningham. Um, a slight uh, consternation there about our uh, apparent restriction of bus passes. I'm being told that we're actually extending them uh, rather than restricting them. So perhaps there's a bit of a misunderstanding developing there. Um, in terms of modal shift, uh, the draft plan does include a number of measures to influence the decisions of people and businesses, uh, such as low emission zones, uh, workplace parking levies, active travel funding and consolidation centres. And these uh, build upon measures currently underway to reduce demand and encourage modal shift to active travel and public transport and in freight from road, and, uh, road to rail. And I think there will probably be a fairly vigorous discussion around the low emission zone uh, uh, commitment made by the Scottish Government to have one in uh, place by uh, 2018. Uh, I know uh, a number of local authorities have now flagged up their desire to be involved in that. Um, and uh, I do think that that will, uh, uh, bringing low emission zone forward, will begin to focus minds in respect of the uh, advantages uh, of changing modes of travel. As I indicated in an earlier answer, um, we are investing over a billion pounds per year in public and sustainable transport and active travel modes, and we will continue to invest record levels in active travel for the lifetime uh, of this parliament. With respect to uh, aviation, um, I, you know, I, at, at the risk of repeating myself, um, we did uh, get advice from the uh, uh, Climate Change Committee, they advised that the uh, intention to do what we're doing in respect of uh, air transport tax, air transport duty, um, uh, uh, is departure, departure tax, sorry, it's changed its name. I still t tend to think of it as it's er in its earlier incarnation. Um, was doable, it would require uh, extra effort. Um, if you look inside uh, the overall figures for transport, you'll see some transport contributions uh, down compared to others um, and uh, so it isn't just a very straightforward uh, across the board uh, figure. Um, uh, we have you know taken the advice of the Climate Change Committee, we uh, are putting effort in across the board um, and it is that overall target which is the one which we work towards and which we have met. It will have to be a bit sharper on the questions and indeed the answers if we were to get through everyone who's requested. So I call Graham Day to be followed by Alexander Burnett. Thank you. In welcoming these figures, Jim Densham from Stop Climate Care Scotland said they showed real progress was being made towards securing a clean energy revolu revolution and that to hit future climate targets, we must now uh, build on the early successes. However, we've learned in the past couple of days that plans for four wind farms in the firths of Tay and Forth are once again being threatened by the RSPB. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline just how important a part offshore wind is required to play in are achieving these future targets? Rosanna Cunningham. Um, well, I can't really comment on anything that involves continuing uh, legal proceedings. What I can say more broadly is that the draft energy strategy proposes a new 2030 all energy renewables target, uh, which will be an ambitious challenge to deliver the equivalent of half of Scotland's heat, transport and electricity needs uh, from renewable sources. Offshore wind is a large-scale technology with the potential to play a pivotal role in our energy system over the coming decades. And there's a lot of optimis uh, optimism uh, for further development of offshore wind in Scotland. 25% uh, of Europe's offshore wind resource can be found around Scotland's coastline. Alexander Burnett to be followed by John Mason. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, residential emissions have increased by 3% between 2014 and 2015. Uh, will Cabinet Secretary address this by committing to improve energy efficiency so that, where practical, all Scottish homes have an EPC band of C or above rating by 2030? Rosanna Cunningham. I would much rather be able to commit to sorting out Scotland's winter climate to ensure that that wasn't uh, something which was quite so uh, challenging for us. I think I kind of dealt with uh, uh, some of the EPC band 
uh, issues uh, in my response to uh, earlier questions. I am aware uh, that there is um, a desire on the part of some people to set a target for all homes to be EPC band C by a, a certain point. Um, the uh, work is ongoing to develop our energy efficiency programme. And I would remind the Chamber um, that, uh, as I understand it, half a billion pounds is available over the next four years. Uh, and by the end of 2021, we will have allocated over a billion pounds since 2009 on tackling fuel poverty and improving energy efficiency. Uh, we are making good progress uh, in respect of energy efficient dwellings, um, but members are correct to point out um, that uh, uh, we can do more. John Mason, followed by David Stewart. Thank you. Yesterday, the Economy Committee visited the hydrogen office in Methyl in Fife, which was really exciting, and it looked like Scotland is really at the cutting edge. Can she say anything more about where St Scotland stands in the international field in comparison to other countries? Rosanna Cunningham. Well, we do punch above our weight in international efforts. Uh, as I indicated in my statement, the, of the Western European EU 15 countries, only Sweden and Finland have delivered greater reductions. And the EU 15 country average is a 20% emission reduction in 2015 from the baseline. Scotland, 37.6% is well ahead of that. David Stewart, followed by Angus MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the statement and acknowledge that Scotland has met its statutory emissions reduction target for the second successive year. The Cabinet Secretary referred to the role played by the EU in global climate negotiations. Uh, the EU emissions trading scheme is a crucial vehicle to achieve future emissions targets. And of course, President Officer, there is no guarantee that the Brexit negotiations will achieve continued membership for the UK within the EU ETS. Will the Cabinet Secretary agree today to run the Times model without the EU ETS to provide a realistic future scenario for a new climate change bill? Rosanna Cunningham. Sorry, that's an interesting question from David Stewart, and I will speak to officials as to whether that's feasible. Um, I, I don't know, uh, just off the top of my head, whether that is, an, uh, is a feasible option. Uh, he is absolutely right, however, to highlight the importance of the EUTS um, and the considerable degree of uncertainty that now uh, arises um, because we have no indication of what our future involvement there may be um, or whether or not, if we are to be removed from EUTS, whether or not there will be some form of replacement. The, the last time uh, I raised this, uh, with UK ministers, it was clear they hadn't really been giving it um, very much thought, which is a concern. Um, I, I think it's very important that we remember how, how big a part the EU actually plays um, in global climate change uh, debate and in terms of global effort. And I think it's really important that we ensure as much as possible that that is not disturbed, disturbed by Brexit. Angus MacDonald to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Thanks, President Officer. Um, clearly, it's imperative that all parties are on the same page when it comes to tackling climate change. So, does the Cabinet Secretary share my view that the Tory party's friends and allies in the DUP are simply wrong when they describe the Paris Agreement as a delusion and climate change itself as a hoax? Rosanna Cunningham. Um, Presiding Officer, I rather suspect that the people sitting on this bench, these benches here, um, privately share the views of Angus MacDonald uh, in respect of his concerns about the DUP when it comes to climate change. Um, I do them uh, the, the courtesy of assuming um, that their concerns will be as real as ours. Look, the overwhelming consensus of international climate change scientists is that climate change is happening and it's exacerbated by human activity. The Paris Agreement was secured through long and difficult negotiations in 2015 and followed more than 20 years of international consensus building. The Scottish Government is committed to playing its part in that agreement and capitalising on the opportunities it presents to strengthen our economy. It will be a, a great sorrow um, if climate change denial uh, becomes embedded at the heart of government at the Westminster level. Mark Ruskell, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you. Uh, can I join other members in welcoming the meeting of the annual targets for the second successive year and also the intention to set a net zero emissions target, which I think is significant. But given that transport has overtaken energy now as the largest emitter, how can a zero emissions target be met, particularly while there are plans to increase air travel 
particularly at Edinburgh Airport, through the expansion that's planned there, an expansion which will be facilitated by cuts in air passenger duty, a project which has no environmental impact assessment associated with it, and so far we've seen zero interest from the Scottish Government in actually holding that project to account in climate terms. Rosanna Cunningham. Um, well, just to be absolutely clear that in terms of net zero, um, what we're doing is committing ourselves to uh, uh, bringing that in when the evidence is there for us to be able to do it. It will not be um, absolutely on the face of the bill to begin with. I, uh, I think I've already dealt with some of the issues that uh, Mark Ruskell raises in respect of both transport in general and aviation uh, um, uh, in particular. And uh, uh, I, 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 I simply go back to the fact that we are operating on an evidence-based uh, uh, presumption and we are doing that with the Committee on Climate Change. Now, you know, if the Committee on Climate Change uh, begins to look again at this, then, then that is something that we will be taking on board. But at the moment, the advice from the Committee on Climate Change is that what we intend to do in terms of the aviation tax is doable as long as there is sufficient effort across the board. And that's evidenced by our reaching the target again for the second year succession. Liam McCarter, followed by Kate Forbes. Thank you, Deputy President. Officer, can I join uh, with others in welcoming the achievement of the target for the second year in succession? But can I also point the Cabinet Secretary to the views of the Committee on Climate Change that recommends a 65% of new car sales should be electric by 2030, while the Scottish Government is proposing a figure of just 27%. And given that an £8 million transport loan fund is unlikely to make up the shortfall in Can you come to a question, please, Will Mr. Will the Cabinet Carson? Secretary commit to strengthen the final climate change plan to ensure we see delivery of far greater uptake of electric vehicles and low emission vehicles? Rosanna Cunningham. Um, I think that was an occasion when we, we felt that uh, what we're what the Committee on Climate Change was suggesting, all of the evidence that we had suggested that was probably not going to be achievable. Now, you know, we, we are in a situation where uh, we, we have to try and set stretching but realistic targets. Um, and uh, if, if it becomes the case that uh, it does look as if we are going to be able to increase uh, the percentage of new car sales being uh, EV vehicles, then uh, I would be um, absolutely happy to start pressuring my colleague here on the left in, in order to, uh, uh, to confirm that that is possible. Um, but at the moment, um, the advice that we were getting from transport uh, in Scotland was that that was unlikely to be, uh, to be achievable. And factoring that in then into those longer term commitments would be uh, in danger of distorting them unnecessarily. Kate Forbes, followed by John Scott. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. We will inevitably hear calls for a 100% cut in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. What advice has the Committee on Climate Change given on going even further than the Scottish Government proposes? Rosanna Cunningham. Well, the Committee on Climate Change provided two options for the level of long-term ambition. The first option was to keep the 2050 target at its current level of 80% emission reductions. Um, they noted that this was already stretching. Um, and the second option was to increase the ambition of the 2050 target to 90% emission reduction. Um, that that was, and it, the words used by the Committee on Climate Change, that that was at the very limit of feasibility. Um, now, we have taken a very deep breath here uh, in the context of the uh, draft legislation that uh, will be before us at some point in the future, uh, and decided that we would go for that uh, 90%. Um, they were unable to produce a scenario that reduces net greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050. Um, that would be the 100% cut. So the, the UK Committee on Climate Change could not produce a scenario that delivered that, I think, in those circumstances. To, to have said we would do it or, or to be pushed into doing it at this point would be very, very unwise. We've come to the last two questions. John Scott to be followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for the advance copy of her statement. Others have noted that progress in reducing transport emissions since 1990 has been poor and there's little or no improvement. Will the Cabinet Secretary accept that we must be more ambitious in our electric vehicle uptake targets to bring them more into line with other European nations? If they can do it, why can't we? 
Will the Cabinet Secretary also ensure that electric car ownership is made more attractive and is incentivised by the Scottish Government by adopting measures such as installing more charging points and the possible use of interchangeable batteries and considering bus lane usage? Rosanna Cunningham. That may be a level of technical detail um, that I would be unwise to uh, engage in at this point. I'm sorry, but I, I missed uh, the member. Did he give a comparator, somebody else that was producing a much bigger target? Mr Scott. I'm, I'm sorry, I just... It's Other just European I'm, countries seem to have greater ambitions in terms of the introduction of EVs than we do. Yeah, right. Rosanna Cunningham. There are a variety of ambitions, it has to be said. Uh, across a number of different countries. Um, although it is important to actually take care to investigate uh, exactly what is being proposed in some of these uh, supposed ambitions. Um, and uh, uh, not that many countries have the kind of uh, tied hand statutory <laughs> Um, uh, approach that we've been taking to things. So um, it, would be, it would be useful to know country by country uh, uh, what some of the targets were and how they propose to achieve it. Um, I know that Norway is one, um, but uh, uh, the, no, other, no other country is actually planning to ban traditional petrol and diesel vehicles, although there is a debate. So there are a variety of different targets. There's a variety of different discussions. And different countries and markets are going to differ in their rates of electric vehicle adoption for a whole set of reasons. Um, I think our vision represents an ambitious and challenging target. Just before, before I move on to our last question, could I remind members that if we're going to have conversations on the front benches, it's actually very loud in my left ear particularly today. <laughs> Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. Would the Cabinet Secretary outline how the Memorandum of Understanding with the State of California will help address climate change and potentially create low-carbon jobs? Rosanna Cunningham. Well, a key part of the Scottish Government's agreement with California is to increase cooperation through the work of the Under Two Coalition, and that's the big coalition that I referred to, uh, around 1.2 billion people from 35 countries across six continents um, who are all committed uh, to ambitious emissions reduction measures. Um, the opportunities through this collaboration for Scotland and our partners are great. Collective effort is key. Our work with California and the Under Two Coalition will be focused on these key areas, which will help all partners maintain momentum in cutting emissions and therefore reap the benefits that there are. Um, there are some very much more specific uh, commitments uh, um, involving a major climate change conference in California in 2018, um, where we will be providing uh, uh, support um, and also uh, some expert advice to explain and demonstrate good practice um, and technological developments driving the low carbon tr transition because that is of interest to people from outside Scotland. Um, and there are other uh, detailed uh, parts of that agreement which I can update uh, Emma Harper on separately. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes questions on the statement. And I will give a couple of moments before we move on to the next item of business. <laughs>